Dead by Daylight is a relatively fun game. Well, as long as you ignore that camping, tunneling, teabagging, slugging, smack talking, stream sniping, sore losing, sore winning, death threatening, doxing, and DDoSing, but aside from that, pretty fun. Every single gamer has experienced some form of toxicity, but there's just something about DVD in particular that seems to bring the worst out of people. So let's take a look at why that is. At its core, Dead by Daylight is an asymmetrical game. There's one player taking the role of killer facing off against four survivor players. The killer's goal is to hook and kill, and the survivor's goal is to, you know, survive. Specifically by repairing generators to power up the exit gate. The number one thing that separates Dead by Daylight from other online games is without a doubt, tribalism. Ever since the dawn of man, early humans found safety and comfort in numbers. It was much easier to live together than it was being alone. You get to have each other's back, share food, have company, and a bear is less likely to eat you in your sleep. Flash forward to today, and tribalism still plays a large role in our lives. A big example of this is sports, where there's two sides of a game. If you guys know anything about sports, then you know it could get a... Uh, pretty intense. The reason for that type of hostility is a line of thinking called us versus them, Dodgers versus Giants, progressives versus conservatives, pineapple on pizza enjoyers versus normal people, killers versus survivors. Players that only play one side take their side to heart and as a part of their identity. An attack on one of them is an attack on all of them, and they will defend their side as if their life depended on it. Don't believe me? Just take a look at my TikTok comments. I feel like I have to put on a hazmat suit every time I do that, but why is it like this? Why do people spend hours arguing with complete strangers online over a game that has a spin-off for horny players? The thing here is that villains aren't often born, they're created. Someone could come into the game and try to be nice and try to have fun and then they get absolutely steamrolled and BM'd over and over and over again until they just snap and stop being nice. I'm not gonna lie, I'm also guilty of this. I'll go into a tough match and get absolutely outplayed and mocked in endgame chat to the point that I decide I'm gonna go absolutely sicko mode in this next game and completely obliterate these innocent survivors that have never done anything wrong to me. It becomes a real issue though when players take that animosity towards the other side and they surround themselves with that same animosity. A hate bubble, if you will. That's why that type of content works. These survivors love watching killers get frustrated and bullied until they disconnect. Likewise, those killers love seeing bully squads get camped and abused. It's like a fantasy to them. The problem here isn't really the videos though, it's just how seriously the players take the game, or rather, how seriously they take their side of the game. This is why good survivors often use that division to their advantage. I've come across a lot of these myself. After getting stunned by the best player on their team, they'll teabag and click at me like crazy, but they're not really doing it to be toxic or to rub it in my face. In that specific situation, they're doing it to try to antagonize me so that I chase after them. If I do, and they're as good of a survivor as they think they are, then they'll have me right where they want me, distracted. Distracted enough for their team to hurry up and make progress on gens. That's when I take a page out of my dad's playbook and simply walk away. Speaking of books, let's get some clarification on what is and isn't toxic by taking a quick look at the game's rulebook. That's right, there's not one set of actions that everyone agrees is toxic. It changes depending on who you ask. Dude, why'd you hit me before I had a chance to heal up? Yeah, I know you chase and hook someone else after I got unhooked, but I'm not fully healed yet. Oh my god, why are you guys body blocking to try to save your teammate that's on their final hook? Ugh. Um, what the heck? I got lucky and hit the 4% chance of unhooking myself and you didn't let me leave? Report it. Oh come on, why do you have to keep blinding me? These are rules that people get legitimately upset over and there's many 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 more. But the thing is, a killer isn't going to get punished in game for not letting a survivor leave through the hatch. Survivors aren't going to get points taken away for being altruistic. Something that could amplify sour feelings after a match is the fact that you either rank up or down in each game. There's no unranked quick play. For that reason, although there isn't a purely competitive mode, that competitiveness is still there. That also makes players take matches much more seriously. So when somebody doesn't play the way they think the game should be played, they get upset. The way you play is never going to appease everyone. For me personally, I'm a killer main, but I understand the pains of survivors. So I play in what I consider a tough but fair way, because it's how I prefer to play when I'm survivor. Basically, treat others how you want to be treated. That's good advice for life in general. Unless of course you're a masochist, which, if you play this game, you just might be. 
Additionally, we also have to consider the big Canadian elephant in the room here. It's always super easy to blame the developers over something you don't like because, well, they made the game. When people get upset that their opponent is using a really strong element of the game, that's not on the player. They're just using something that was given to them to use. If something in any game is genuinely too strong, that falls on the developers and it's up to them to decide if that strong element needs to be changed and how much to change it. And when it comes to Dead by Daylight specifically, it makes players feel like they need to play a certain toxic way in order to win. That's why it's important for a player base and the development team to have a good transparent relationship. However, the DVD developers don't exactly have the best history of being in their fan base's favor. I made a video covering the game's previous controversy if you want to get a better insight to that, but the gist of it is, the game used to be super buggy and unbalanced. Every major patch was met with some sort of vitriol by a good chunk of the community. This wasn't helped by developers making PR mistakes with what they say about the game sometimes. And yet, year after year, they have asked the community to nominate them for the Labor of Love Award at the Steam Awards, which would always be met with many players laughing at their screens. Personally, I think the developers have been doing a better job at keeping in touch with what the player base wants in terms of how to make the game healthier, at least considering how it was before. But all of those mistakes from the past still linger on and make it all the more easier to criticize them. They don't know what they're doing. They don't even play their own game, probably. They must hate working there so much that they're self-sabotaging. As someone who used to be in the game development scene, I tend to give developers in general the benefit of the doubt. I don't envy them at all, especially the ones running live service games with big communities. Perfect game balance, especially in Dead by Daylight's case, will always seem to elude them. Add on top of that the pressure of every single player of meeting their expectations. Don't get me wrong here, the devs aren't perfect and they of course mess up. We should still keep them accountable for unhealthy changes and strive to make the game better. Although, no matter what happens, there's no reality where everyone is satisfied. There will always be people upset over any change and the division grows further. I've seen so many, this game is survivor sided and this game is killer sided comments literally right next to each other other. Something that every single player needs to realize is that this game will never be balanced. There are so many different combinations that can end up in a single match. As of this recording, there are 32 killers, 702 add-on modifiers, 234 perk powers, 41 maps, and already I give up on trying to calculate all the different possibilities that could go into a match because I'm not a math magician, okay? That's not even taking into consideration stuff like player spawn placements, totem locations, and gen regions. Simply put, there are just too many random factors for Dead by Daylight to be considered a serious competitive game. And here's a hot pocket take, this is a party game, so why aren't people having as much fun as they should? Everything I've talked about so far, the tribalism, the imaginary rulebook, the balancing issues, the overly competitive nature, all of that put together is the perfect recipe for toxicity. And all of that is unloaded after the match. You have a better chance of not being exposed to toxicity if you eat gas station sushi than you do if you go into the endgame chat. The thing about talking with another person online is that everyone seems to get a keyboard courage buff. They say stuff they probably wouldn't say to someone in real life because it's easy to forget that on the other side of those pixels, there's another person. I don't think, in the history of ever, anybody has under any circumstances told someone else to off themselves because they were legitimately upset that they lost at a game of rock, paper, scissors. That's not normal. Like I get it, losing sucks, but at least I could say I've never sent a death threat to a streamer over a loss. By the way, there's a button right there to hide chat, very useful. Anyway, every single time I see those types of toxic messages, I genuinely feel bad. But not in the way they want me to feel. I feel bad for them. I really do because I think that everyone is capable of more than that. I luckily have pretty thick skin, but I know that others don't. I've seen the clips. I've heard about times someone like that attacks a player that's just trying to have fun and it ruins their whole day. It's really sad because what I see there is someone lashing out. They have other stuff going on in their lives and it's easier to lash out over something as inconsequential as this game than it is to deal with the problems that they're having, let alone than it is for them to admit that they didn't play well. They don't improve themselves because it's not their fault. The other side cheated somehow. That's why some players play a certain way, such as when killers say they tunnel and camp because they need to, because that's the only way they can win. I don't tunnel or camp, and yet I do pretty well for myself. Does that mean I'm the top 1% of the 1% then? What is going on over there?
That sort of toxicity doesn't stop when they win either. Sore winners are a thing too. They teabag like their life depends on it at the exit gate, and they hit you on the hook like you owe them money. Then they go into chat and type easy, even though it's their first win in a three hour play session. Then there's the truly toxic type of gaming, where the goal is no longer to just win the game. You got players sandbagging their teammates and snitching to the killer on where they're hiding. Before this was fixed, pinhead players were able to hold the entire game hostage by standing on top of his box, preventing survivors from solving it and thus triggering a chain hunt. Pig used to also be able to stand in front of key cages to prevent survivors from escaping their head trap. A very common toxic playstyle is slugging. If you don't know what slugging is, it's when a player and then they all over the Oh, sorry, I was reading the wrong definition. I was on Urban Dictionary. <clears throat> slugging is when the killer knocks down survivors and leaves them to bleed out instead of hooking them, which takes four minutes per survivor. Toxic players are more tempted to do this, along with tunneling and face camping when they see TTV in someone's name. They have a bigger audience for their trolling now, and they take that as their time to shine. I've had people try to do this to me too, but unfortunately for them, I'm built different, and I just switch what's on the screen to talk with chat. Oh my god. Then there are those whose goals are beyond our comprehension, where they want nothing more than for survivors to suffer. I remember seeing this comment somewhere about how this happened to someone and their team. The killer was a streamer, so the commenter went into their channel. They were the only viewer there. They go into the VOD to see what the streamer was saying during the match, and here's the thing that really stuck with me. The streamer didn't say a single word that entire match. They slugged everyone and, with an absolutely blank expression, just watched as the whole team bled out. That sort of mentality is not normal, and it is definitely not healthy. All of that in-game toxicity is so strong that it can't be contained to only inside the game. It manifests into pessimism. Take a look at any official DBD post, or rather, any DBD post at all. I can almost guarantee that there will be someone wanting to start some sort of argument with a charged comment, especially when the post relates to patch notes or upcoming changes. Trust me, as someone who covers that, I've seen a lot of these. And when it comes to new characters or perks, they're so easy to dismiss them all. They really do judge it harshly on first impressions. I remember a comment I saw under one of my videos for the Singularity gameplay reveal, where the commenter said that the new killer is overpowered and unfair, and this just proves how killer-sided the devs are. Out of curiosity, I took a look at their profile, and sure enough, right there in their bio, it says that they play on PlayStation. The reason that says a lot is because when there's new content, that stuff is available early to try out in the playtest build, which is essentially the game's beta version for the new changes. However, that's only available on PC. That means this person definitely did not come to that conclusion based on their own experience. They were just predisposed to thinking the update was going to be bad, because their way of thinking in relation to the game is that they'll still have a bad time and now they're about to have an even worse time. For someone like that, that could be the last straw for them. They comment that that's it, they're done. The game is dying and they're leaving. Maybe it's for the best for them. However, I've also seen people who no longer play the game, but are still upset from when they left that they'll actually come into my comments and argue back and forth with people on why the game sucks, why they suck for still playing, and that they should leave too. They don't want them to have the type of fun that they don't have anymore. Then there's people who just absolutely hate the game. They hate the devs, they hate the community, they hate the other side, they hate their teammates, and yet they still play it. They keep going back to it even though it agitates them so much. Every single factor I've talked about so far has caused them to be so unhappy whenever they play. It's quite literally almost an abusive relationship. Now take everything that's been brought up and think for a second. If you saw your friends play Dead by Daylight and they asked you to play and you look up stuff about it and all of this is what you learn, would you still be interested in playing? That's without even mentioning the high barrier of entry for new players when it comes to just learning how to play, where you can put 50 hours into the game and still be considered new. All of that discourages potential players and makes it harder for the game to grow. There's obviously a lot of ideas that the developers can implement to make this problem better, but that's really out of our control right now, so... What can we do about this? When you're just not having a good time, even at your lowest low, you shouldn't actively try to bring others down to your level. Instead of typing out your frustrations in the chat, just leave. Remember that it's just a game. Games are meant to be fun. Once you start thinking of it as anything more than that, once you start taking it really seriously, that's a slippery slope to having your day ruined. That's happened to me too, don't worry. Get some water, get some food, 
do some stretches, look at cat videos, or maybe do the seemingly impossible and take a deep breath and just touch some grass. At the end of the day, it'll be okay, because I realized that it could be a lot worse. I could be playing League of Legends.